Bloody greetings, Slashaholics. Welcome to my special corner of the 80 Slasher Library. Tonight will be creepy reading number seven for the channel. A terrifying trip into insanity. When the noises we hear are hard to distinguish between reality and unreality. The things we know, the things that are unknown. When we hear our house creak and crack and odd noises in the night, we automatically assume it's just the house settling. Tonight, you'll hear a different side of things. Something we've all, perhaps, imagined when we hear those noises. So here it is, Slashaholics, tonight's creepy reading, titled, The Creeks. Enjoy. There is no such thing as house settling down noises. It is commonly heard you buy a new home, recently built, you move in with your family, and at least for the few first weeks, you are expected to go through some uncomfortable noises. Cracks, moans, and clacks, indicating that your house is settling down on its foundations. But no need to worry, this is just a temporary discomfort, bound to stop as soon as the house finally sits completely still. Let me be as straightforward as possible. This couldn't be further from the truth. Unfortunately, I speak from first-hand experience. I am a car salesman. I really don't want to get into details of where I live since it would only endorse terror to any locals reading this. All you need to know is that I managed to make a small business on my own and by the time I was 34, I finally had one of my biggest dreams come true. Through careful managing of my company and good investments, I was able to buy myself a house. However, I didn't just want any house. My goal was to build something of my own, like I had done so many years ago when I started running my business. And just that I did. I managed to sign a contract with the civil engineer, and after taking into consideration my ideas for a perfect place, we started building what I dreamed of one day calling home. The construction took around two years. I was, of course, nervous about making such a big investment. To be honest, I spent most of what I had for this house. But when I finally saw it, I could say without a doubt, it was worth it. I now had a beautiful house in a nice suburban area, overlooking the center of the city from the hill it was built on. It was not really big, but it looked comfortable, with a nice view of the city. It even had a small garden where my then-girlfriend could plant flowers and enjoy her coffee in the afternoons. Once everything was done, me and my girlfriend happily moved in. This was my last good memory of this place, I guess. I gently closed the door after bringing the last suitcase in and told my girlfriend the overused but always popular home sweet home. We kissed near the window while the last sun rays before sunset bathed our home in light. That night, I didn't sleep well. While trying to fall asleep, I heard annoying cracks coming from the kitchen. At first, I didn't pay much attention, but the cracks seemed different every time. I am not completely sure, but back then I felt like the sounds were coming from different spots every time. Like something was moving. I tried waking my girlfriend up. Having had a little too much of celebratory champagne for herself, the only answer I got was, Get some sleep, you little pussy, followed by a half-angry, half-sleepy moan. I tried to do what she suggested. The noises were still there. They were fewer and not as loud, but they were distinct. I had almost gotten used to them when I got startled by the sound of broken glass coming from right inside of our bedroom. I instantly jumped up, terrified, 
looking around me in case there were burglars inside. I couldn't sense anyone. Once my eyes got used to the dark, I saw that my old glass snowball was on the floor, in pieces. It must have fallen down from my bedside table, but how? Our window was closed, so there is no chance the wind knocked it down. It just fell. Whatever, I thought, I was far too tired to pay attention, so I drifted to sleep. I heard nothing more that night. The next morning, I explained the situation to my girlfriend as best as I could. She wasn't really worried and said that sometimes stuff seemingly fall on their own. Nevertheless, I did contact the civil engineer to ask about the sounds, and he told me that it was normal to hear them because the house was still settling. The way he described it, it would be abnormal if I didn't hear something at all. I asked him for how long would this be happening, and he told me anywhere from three weeks to two months. I didn't like the idea of having ghost sounds around my house for that long, but what could I do? Three weeks came, then two months, and then a third one. However, there was no sign of quiet in my home. The cracks and the moans kept coming, sometimes loud, sometimes like a whisper. But every night, it felt like they were coming from more places at the same time. Then I started hearing them inside my bedroom. Every single night, I heard cracks from the walls and the sound of doors moaning. My girlfriend heard them too, but she was way more patient than I. I couldn't go through this anymore. I called the engineer again, and this time he had no certain answer. Something about the hill having some faults or, and getting used to the extra weight of a new building on it. I, I didn't believe him anymore, so I did my own research. On the internet, I found rubbish mostly. But after digging and digging, I found out some intriguing stories. There were few people that talked about persistent noises way after their houses were built. And then I stumbled upon something that looked like a crazy conspiracy theory, but it did catch my attention. It was a small text in a site full of crazy Ghostbusters-like junk stories. It read, There are no house settling down noises. You would not believe it, but there are other creatures in this world seeking a place to live right amongst humans and these creatures thrive on fear and despair. To them, they feel like cocaine feels to an addict. Every building is completely settled and perfectly still, right when it is built. However, the otherworldly beings realize that their prey is about to reside in it, so they also try to occupy the property. They invite themselves, one or two at a time, and sometimes even more together. They find shelter inside the walls, above the ceilings, or anywhere dark enough to keep them covered. The sounds you hear at night is them moving, crawling, and searching for the best place to make their nest. They push the furniture just a little bit. They walk inside the thinnest of walls, and sometimes they may become a little clumsy and push something down from a shelf in their exploration. But this is just the beginning. Until now, there is no case of them attacking a human. However, they do feed on us, and their tactics are even worse. Since they love bringing terror to people, they start playing around with the residents of the home. They make even more terrible sounds. They become more aggressive. They slam the windows whisper to you during the night in their unholy language. They make you paranoid and once you totally lose your mind and become an empty shell, they will wait until you die. Alone, crazy, forgotten by your loved ones who couldn't stand hearing a lunatic speaking about voices coming from their house again. Then they can finally feast on your rotting corpse and enjoy their elaborate hunt. Have you ever heard stories about people dying in their homes all alone? 
and finally being discovered half-eaten, seemingly by rats or other critters. Well, now you know what really happened to them. You can't outrun them. Once you have noticed their presence, you will never forget about them. And in every house you ever step in, they will find you. Because they know that once you are scared of them, you are theirs. I was, of course, startled a bit. I couldn't believe this nonsense, but damn if it wasn't creepy. I guess someone had a similar experience as me, decided to make some fun of it and make it a scary story for fools. Oh, how wrong I was. Over the next months, my situation worsened. The house felt alive every time I was alone. I started hearing things that I couldn't even identify, murmurs and shrieks and other terrible things. I didn't tell my girlfriend about what I had started to believe in. Maybe I didn't want to terrify her without proof or I was just too scared she'd think I was crazy. Unfortunately, the situation went on and it got worse by the day. I couldn't sleep anymore. I lived in constant fear of my own home. I was always tired and my work was affected since I was exhausted all the time. I started monologuing and shouting against the things that haunted me. My relationship became terrible. My poor girlfriend couldn't bear hearing me screaming in fear every night. She left me a cloudy winter morning, taking my last ray of happiness with her. I completely fell in paranoia after that. The cracks and the voices and the fallen objects were always there every time I returned home. In my desperation, I sold the house at a laughable price and I found a tiny place in the worst part of the city. I hoped I could escape, but it felt like all that I had read in that goddamn text was true as the creatures in this house had seemingly found me too, and took advantage of the situation. The sick game started again. Now I started thinking that I could actually see them at the corner of my eye. I'm not safe. Whenever I go, they toy with me. They whisper to me. They make my entire house moan like a broken door. I can't stand this anymore. The pistol is shaking in my hand as I type this. In my head, I hear a last small voice telling me that I'm just paranoid. That with some help, I'll, I'll get through this. That is all in my head and everything is fine. But the voice is choked under constant slams of doors I never opened and books falling from their shelves. For the first time, I think... The shadow at my left is coming toward me. It has been doing so since I opened my drawer and reached for my gun. I don't care anymore. I am taking my life. After all, it is just not worth living as a crazy man, a broken soul, full of fear and anguish. My only request is for you to be careful. If you hear this, and have heard or are hearing noises in your home, old or new, noises that deep down you know should not be there. Please, please get away. If things have fallen down without a cause, or you hear your windows or doors seemingly closing on their own, get out of there. If your situation is like mine, no, I doubt that you can be saved anymore. But if you start seeing the shadows in your house moving towards you, then you only have one option. Okay, folks. This has been Creepypasta Reading number seven. This story on the channel here, titled The Creeks, is from a Reddit post by Oren Catuli on Reddit in the subreddit No Sleep titled There is no such thing as house settling down noises. 
I'll supply a link to the original post in the description below. Please check it out. Drop them a comment. Let them know you heard their story here on the AD Slasher Librarian YouTube channel. And the next time you hear your house settling, a little creaking noise, popping, cracking, are you convinced that it's just your house settling? Or could it be something more? Sleep tight, listeners. Until next time. This is your friendly neighborhood 80 Slasher Librarian, signing off.